webinar on finding practice guidelines. Uh, my name is Nicole, this is Maureen, and we're going to be talking today about what are clinical practice guidelines and some of the places that you can look to find them. This is part of the educational webinar series that we run here at the WHA Virtual Library. Uh, we'll be posting this on YouTube and linking it from our website after the session. And you can also take a look at our previous section sessions and sign up for our upcoming ones there. So what are clinical practice guidelines? Essentially, they are care recommendations for a particular condition or a patient group. They can be really, really simple, such as a, just a checklist. If someone has condition X, you should do Y and Z. Or they can be more complex, ranging from decision trees to different care algorithms, uh, clinical care pathways, things like that. But the important thing to remember about these are they are evidence-based. So they're really at the top of the evidence pyramid. They're based on a thorough review of literature on a particular topic, and they really should be considered the standard of care for that particular care group or condition. Um, when you're thinking about evidence-based, you should also keep in mind that a lot of organizations will provide a level of evidence indication for these recommendations. So for example, if there's 10,000 RCTs or randomized controls trials that say you should do X, they will rate that recommendation more strongly. Whereas if there's maybe only one or two, it will be a less strong recommendation. Or maybe they'll just say there's not enough evidence available to let us know whether we should be doing X or not. Yeah, and one of the things to bear in mind with guidelines is that there really is a wide range of what's good and what's not. Um, so do pay attention to how evidence-based and how good the quality of evidence is every time you're looking at guidelines. So the sources we'll be going over today are listed here. It includes the Deborah Chain Virtual Library website, uh, CMA Infobase, PubMed, HSTAT, the TRIP database, the International Guideline Library from Guidelines International Network, the ECRI Guidelines Trust, which used to be the National Guideline Clearinghouse, and also techniques for finding uh, guidelines from specific organizations using Google. This is not a, in any way a comprehensive list. There are definitely other ways out there, other sites that will help you find guidelines, but this should just give you a quick overview of some of the different ways that you can go about it. And we're gonna be moving through each fairly quickly given the length of our presentation. Mm -hmm. But if you need more information, we've previously done webinars on PubMed and Google, so you can go back and look at those. Or you can always contact us and we're happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one to go through a particular site with you. Yeah, we're also happy to do a literature search for you and just return a list of guidelines to you that you can look at. So the first site I'd like to mention is the WHA Virtual Library Toolkit. So if you go to our website and look under find information, you'll find a section for toolkits. These are uh, ways that we've collated different or um, different links or websites or databases that are relevant to a particular topic area or a group. So we have a toolkit specific to practice guidelines. It has a really good video on what exactly a practice guideline is. So if you need more information on that, I definitely recommend taking a look at that. We have a list of key databases, some of which we'll be talking about today. And we have a list of specific guidelines from the Canadian and international context. Again, this list is not comprehensive. If there are things that are missing from the list that you think should be added, please feel free to let us know. But this should provide you with a good starting point. And also, if you look at some of the topic-specific uh, toolkits, such as nursing, there are also some short lists of guidelines there that might be of interest to you. Mm -hmm. Divided, of course, by subject. Um, so one of the big ones for Canada is the CMA Infobase, the CPG, Clinical Practice Guidelines Infobase. And so they've recently uh, moved homes. Uh, the new interface is much nicer looking than the old one, and I find much more intuitive. Um, so it includes guidelines from Canada, uh, both French and English, which is very nice. Um, the search possibilities include some truncation with the asterisks, quotation marks, uh, limited Boolean searching, so that's the and and or uh, features. I'm looking for guidelines on this or this. Um, the, when you do a search that looks like this, uh, you'll tend to want to stick to relatively broad topics when you're doing a search. Um, you'll get, so here it's got diabetes in our example and it's pulling up these results. You can see on the left-hand side, you can filter the results, uh, including by condition, by specialty. There's also uh, 
this is just a screenshot, so we can't scroll down, but there's the ability to filter by date and by um, a couple of other things as well. Did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, this is put out by the Canadian Medical Association. So if you yes, are a member, it. if you are a member of that organization, you also have access to the primary care clinical practice guidelines, which you can see on the right hand side there. Um, so those are some additional options for you. Yeah, we don't have access to those though. Uh, like we personally. Um, so. Uh, PubMed is another great place to get resources. Uh, you've probably searched in PubMed before. Searching just for databases can be a little, or not databases, guidelines, uh, can be a little bit tricky because it's not immediately obvious how to go about it. But once you've done your search and you can build your search the way you would build any search in PubMed, it can be as simple as or as complex as you like. But do you see on the left-hand side, there's article types just at the top. And when you initially see that, like when, when you initially do a search, that'll only have clinical trial and review in it. But if you click on article types, it'll show you a list of different options. And one of those will be guidelines, practice guideline. You click on that and then click show. Then it will appear uh, just black and white, like clinical trial and review. Um, but that's not actually limiting your search to guidelines yet. You have to click on it so that it's got it's highlighted in blue and it's got the little check mark next to it and then it's showing you only the practice guidelines or if you clicked practice guidelines and reviews it would be showing you both of those uh, so it's a two-step process to be able to find guidelines within PubMed and it can sort of throw you off when you're like well I, I already clicked guidelines why am I seeing this clearly a systematic review or, or whatever um, so then you get the Results that you have, uh, they're hosted elsewhere. Um, again, the quality varies depending on where they're from, so do pay attention. But uh, PubMed is probably more one of the more comprehensive places to look for guidelines. There's quite a bit in there. Uh, HSTAT is another place uh, where you can find guidelines. There's, it's a, it's a relatively small collection, but uh, you can search it either through a general search or by browsing. It's one where I personally find it a bit easier to search by browsing rather than by searching um, because it is so small and it tends to be fairly straightforward uh, once you get into an area where things are. Um, the search is a little bit not intuitive. You'll see on this screen cap here, there's this big search bar at the top that says searching books, but that's searching something much more broadly of which HSTAT is part. So if you want to search just HSTAT, you search in that little uh, that little box right next to it where in the screen cap it says stroke. Um, so when you search in there, it'll show you a list of different options. And usually what you're looking for specifically is within a subcategory of each of those items. So the title might not look like exactly what you're looking for, but if you click on the title and then look inside, you'll see a number of subheadings, one of which will be relevant to your topic stroke. Um, so not the most intuitive, good evidence in there though. Um, and there is, uh, there's also a collection of historical guidelines. So if you want to go back and look at how something used to be, um, that's in there and they make it very clear that they're not for current use. They're only for historical uh, assessments. Um, TRIP is one of my favorite ways to search for uh, guidelines. There are features of TRIP that aren't accessible to WRHA uh, virtual library users because it requires a a stepped up subscription, which the virtual library doesn't have, but you can still access guidelines through TRIP regardless of who you are or where you are. Um, it's pretty simple. The search is not overly complicated. So again, keep the your search terms relatively straightforward. Don't do a very complex search. Um, the example we have here is heart attack. And it'll come up with a list of different things, but you'll see on the side, on the right hand side, there are these different options. So you've got systematic reviews, you've got secondary evidence, and then you can see guidelines. So if you click on guidelines, that'll limit to guidelines. And one of the better features of TRIP 
is that it divides it up by by country or region as well. So you've got Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the UK, the USA, and then the rest of the world filed under other. Um, and so you can limit as is relevant to you or see if there's more in a certain area than in another area. Um, and the, the, the guidelines are hosted offsite as with most of the databases that we're talking about today. Uh, they show little snippets. They're not really abstracts, but little snippets of what you're looking for. Uh, TRIP ranks its results according to relevance, so the same way that Google does. So if you're not seeing what you're looking for on page one of your results, you're probably not going to see what you're looking for on page 10 of the results. Um, and you can see here in the results that it's highlighted heart attacks, so you can see how it's it's pulled out that bit from the guideline itself and is saying, well, here, here's what it's saying about heart attacks in context. Um, sometimes with the UK guidelines in particular, you'll come up against a geographic wall where you can't access the resource because you're in Canada. Um, however, for the UK, <laughs> There's also the NICE guidelines, which are available for the UK. Uh, they are not one of the databases that we're looking at today, but it's another option for you if you're interested specifically in UK guidelines and you can't find them through here. Another international option is the International Guideline Library, which is hosted by GIN. Uh, this library has a lot more diversity in terms of its geographic coverage. I found it's been particularly good for Middle Eastern and Eastern European content, but it also has US and other regions as well. Um, it's got about 7,000 total guidelines in it, so it has a lot of stuff, but maybe not everything that's out there. It also has a lot of stuff that's not in English. So if you're gonna be using this database, I would recommend using the advanced search so you can filter by language, particularly if you are an Anglophone only speaker. You can also filter by a couple of other different options in that uh, advanced search option that, that includes a uh, country as well as it allows you to search by mesh term and there's a few other options there for you to take a look at. Yes and PubMed you could also search by mesh term if you wanted to. I didn't mention that there but it's true. Then uh, we have the ECRI. So I don't know if anyone used guidelines.gov or the National Guideline Clearinghouse back when it was around. This was a project of the American Association for Health Research Quality uh, that shut down this past summer due to lack of funding. So the ECRI basically took over a lot of that content in their guidelines trust. This is a free source, but it does require that you register and sign in with a username and password. So once you've done that, it's a really nice interface. You can search by um, organization specifically, you can search using keywords, that kind of thing. Uh, their inclusion guidelines limit the results to English only published online in the past five years. So you won't find historical guidelines in here and you won't find a lot of international guidelines that are non-English. So there is some general international guidelines, there is some Canadian, some UK, some Australian, but not a lot from regions where the primary language is not English. Another thing that's nice about this source, uh, when guidelines.gov was up and running, it had a particular appraisal tool that it used to determine the quality of a guideline. As Maureen was mentioning, some guidelines are of better quality than others. So ECRA has actually taken up that idea with its uh, trust scorecard. So when you're looking at each guideline, they have actually assessed the quality of the guideline based on a number of different factors. Those include the composition of the guideline development group. So did it include patient representatives? Uh, do the people appear to be experts on the topic area? Are there any obvious conflicts of interest that might have affected the bias of the guideline? It looks at the comprehensiveness of the search strategy and other details about how exactly the evidence was found and determined to be supporting a recommendation or not, and various other things that will help you to consider whether this particular guideline is one that is of high quality and that should be incorporated into your practice. So the final option we're going to be talking about today is Google. So we, a few months ago, did a webinar on using Google for searching in the health sciences. And I would recommend that you guys take a look at that if you need more information. But I did want to mention it here because it is a really good option for finding uh, database or guidelines from specific websites without having to go to each individual website and search through it using their own search, internal search. So some of the options- And internal searches for websites are often terrible. So yeah. this is 
actually just a better option in general. Right. So if you don't want to end up going to the specific organizational websites one by one, you can use a few of the different Google search options. Those include in title, which allows you to search for words that appear in the title of the page that you're looking at. Uh, those include file type, which allows you to limit to particular file types such as PDF or doc or PowerPoint. And you can also use the site option to search only at particular websites or domains. So that can be a particular website like SOGC, or you can search whole domains. So for example, if you wanted Canadian sources, you could search site.ca and you'd find all the different websites that end with .ca. So in this particular search, I've taken a look at in title guideline, site SOGC.org, and file type PDF. And you can see here the first result that comes up is the new Canadian guideline for exercise for healthier pregnancies. So if you were looking for guidelines um, from specific organizations like the SOGC, this is a really good option for you to find them quickly and easily. So that brings us to the end of our list. I also wanted to mention that if you happen to be working on guideline development yourself, that's something that we are also happy to support. You should get in touch with us. We can help you by doing literature searches or even supporting full systematic reviews for you. You just need to get in touch with us on our website and we'll be happy to talk with you about different options for doing that. And we've also included our contact information if you need more help with a particular site, if you want more information on how finding guidelines for a particular topic, or if you want us to actually do the research for you and look for them, please feel free to get in touch with us. And as we mentioned at the beginning, this webinar will be posted on our website uh, probably tomorrow, and it will be available for you to view, as well as you can always get in touch with us. Yep. That's all. all. Yep. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, stop record. Oh, stop.